Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are back again together and we are still looking at chemistry. Okay. Um, the one that was written uh, by the Gauteng uh, um, uh, candidates. All right. As they were sitting in for their preliminary exams. Okay. So if you haven't subscribed, please be part of the family. Uh, tell them, hey, we are learning so many things uh, here in this on, on this channel. Okay, uh, and please don't forget if you need assistance with either mathematics or physical science, please just, uh, you know, send us an email at uh, info at mlungesingosi.co.za. Right, so we look at question four and uh, let's look at what that has for us. All right, so they gave us the flow diagram, okay. That shows various organic reactions using propane as a starting reactant. Okay, so there's our flow diagram there. Right, so uh, we've got, okay, uh, we've got reactants R, T, and U represented, okay, uh, by different organic, represent rather different organic compounds. Right, they say compound T, all right, this guy over here is a carboxylic acid and U is a functional acid isomer of pentanoic acid so you, you see how you always need to be to know you know what what represent what right so in this case this tells me uh, if it's a functional isomer of carboxylic acids right it definitely has to be an ester right so let's answer the first question so they say to us we've got uh, they say write down the name of the type of reaction represented by reaction one. So if you look at reaction one, it's propane, uh, it's an alkane, a saturated hydrocarbon, and you are reacting it with bromine, right? With bromine. So in this case, you're going to have an, uh, a substitution reaction, typical substitution reaction, right? Uh, so you can say that's substitution. Okay, remember that saturated hydrocarbons uh, undergo substitution reaction when they react with halogens okay and of course there are special conditions for that to happen if you don't know about that please it means that you haven't watched our video on uh, organic chemistry reactions you can go and do that okay uh, and then 4.1.2 uh, that's reaction two. Um, oh, and by the way there was nothing wrong if you call that bromination okay uh, or you can just simply call it halogenation. Okay. Um, so reaction two. So they take that haloalkane that we formed there and they are reacting it with dilute sodium hydroxide. I did show it as well uh, in that video. Okay. So when they take dilute uh, sodium hydroxide, remember uh, we said this is hydrolysis. Okay. Uh, or you can just simply call it a uh, it's another substitution reaction by the way okay yeah it's another substitution reaction so you can say substitution reaction okay or you can just simply call it hydrolysis okay this one was bromination or halogenation it doesn't matter which one you prefer okay right and then uh, let's go to the next question they say consider reactions one and reaction two, uh, write down the IUPAC name of compound R. Okay, so if you look at compound R, we've taken a bromine, a bromine, right, and we are reacting it, I mean, a propane rather, we are reacting it with bromine, right, and we want the IUPAC name uh, at the end of the day. We know one of those bromide ions is going to attach itself uh, at carbon number one. So it's going to be uh, 4.1.3. This is going to be one bromo propane. Okay. Right. And please just keep in mind, you don't need to apply Makonikov's rule. And Makonikov's rule only will be applicable uh, uh, when we are reacting alkenes. And by the way, where, where there is hydrogen and something else right okay so uh, as we continue reaction three uh, takes place in the presence of a catalyst and heat so where is reaction three 
Okay, there's reaction three. And remember, they told us that U is a functional isomer. So this is an ester. So it means that reaction three must be actually esterification, right? So let's answer the questions that have to uh, that have to do with that. So one four point one point four. They said uh, write down the name and formula of the catalyst. And please remember, uh, esterification happens in the presence of an acid catalyst, sulfuric acid, right? And 4.1.5, uh, they say, write down the IUPAC name of compound T, okay? Um, remember, compound T, so we took an alcohol, all right? And remember, we take an alcohol and it has to react with a carboxylic acid, okay? Now, how do we know which carboxylic acid it was so that alcohol that you took has got uh, three carbons right so whatever carboxylic acid that we react with at the end of the day this guy here you must have um you know must be a functional isomer of pentanoic acid now how many carbons does pentanoic acid have it has five carbons right so it means this ester must have five carbons so it means three were contributed by the uh, by the alcohol. How many will be com contributed by the carboxylic acid? I'm sure you got it. Of course, it's two, right? So which carboxylic acid is it? Remember, with carboxylic acid, you never need to number. Okay, so uh, this means that it would be ethanoic acid. So this would be ethanoic acid. They say they said write down the IUPAC name. So the IUPAC name is ethanoic acid. Okay, so that's 4.1.6. Okay, they say write down the structural formula uh, of compound U. Now, uh, we do know that we've, we, we had an alcohol uh, which has three carbons. So, uh, by the way, this is the ester, right? So we are now forming an ester. All right, they wanted the structure of it. So... So there's the alcohol side, but remember there's an O that is in line with your carbons, right? And then, okay, we call it the cleavage O, right? The one that cuts between the two sides. And in this case, what do we have? We've got C with a double bond because remember that's the ethanoic acid side, right? And the ethanoic acid side has got two carbons. So those are the two carbons with the double bond. And in this case, just to complete the structure, this is what it would look like. Okay, right. So um, let's continue to the next part, okay, which is on another page. I'm just going to put that there. All right, they say to us, we've got a laboratory technician, okay, that wants uh, to prepare butane 2 in okay using but one in okay as a starting reagent as shown below so uh so they this they've got but one in and they want to convert that to but two in they say the following chemicals are available in the laboratory right so here are our chemicals we want to know uh in this case they say select the chemicals required to design this preparation from the list uh, for each step uh, of the preparation write down the balanced equation using structural formulae okay uh, for all organic compounds indicate chemicals needed in each step okay so um so we know what we're going to start with right we're going to start with an alkene uh but one in so i'm going to have that guy there okay so remember that's 4.2 uh so we've got but one in and what are we going to do? Remember, we want to change this guy into but 2 in So we want the position of the double bond to, uh, to change. Okay. So what we now need to do is we must convert it to something else first. Right. So my thinking is, all right, how about we first of all convert it into an alcohol? right uh, because i'm seeing they've given me uh, h2o there 
right? So I can convert it first into an alcohol and then take that alcohol and undergo an elimination reaction, okay? And then we find an alkene. Of course, we're going to apply Zaitsev's rule there, isn't it? So, uh, remember I said I'm, I want to convert this to an alcohol. So I'm going to react that with H2O, okay? But remember, in this reaction, the condition is that this has to be in the presence of H2SO4, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to now form an alcohol on the other side. So this will now the H, okay? Uh, remember, uh, we, we follow Makonikov's rule, isn't it? For the major product. We know the hydrogen will go in the uh, carbon that has the most number of hydrogens. So uh, what are we going to have on the other side? Okay, so I'm going to have, here's my carbon. Okay, so this carbon here had two car uh, hydrogens. So it means that the hydrogen from the water is going to go to that carbon. Remember, we break that double bond. Okay, and then the two arms are available. Uh, sorry about that. So there's my hydrogen. There's another hydrogen there. But on the second carbon, what's going to go there? That's OH. So the H and the OH from the water, the uh, the OH goes to the second carbon. The H goes there. That's our major product. Okay. That's applying Makonikov's rule. And again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it means you haven't watched our videos. Please go and do the right thing. Okay. Right. Now we've got an alcohol. We want to now undertake an elimination reaction. So we're going to take the alcohol. Okay. So there's my alcohol over there. Okay, um, with an OH, so sorry, that's a hydrogen there. So I'm going to take that alcohol and I'm going to pass it through a, all right, so I'm going to take it through concentrated sodium hydroxide. Okay, so I'm going to say, well, plus H2, uh, sorry, sodium hydroxide. Okay. Please remember, for this guy, it must be, uh, uh, you know, uh, concentrated sodium hydroxide. Okay. Okay, and we actually now are going to form an elimination reaction. Um, no, 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 actually, no, actually, I'm, I'm making a mistake. No, actually, we're going to use, sorry, uh, sulfuric acid again. Sorry about that, ladies and gents. We're going to use sulfuric acid. Remember, what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, have it undergo. Actually, I'm thinking about a haloalkane. That's why I'm taking that concentrated uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. Sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is pass it through H2SO4 again. Remember that uh, sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent, right? So what happens is that when I take the alcohol, and, uh, you know, uh, pass it through sulfuric acid. Okay, remember here, I was hydrating an alkene in the presence of an acid. Those are two different things. Here, I'm taking a, a, an alcohol and in this case, um, you know, passing it through sulfuric acid, a dehydrating agent. So what happens? Now we're going to apply Zaitsev's rule, right? Uh, Zaitsev said, well, it's the hydrogen that has the least number of carbons. I mean, it's a carbon rather that has the least number of hydrogens that will actually be eliminated. Um, so I'm going to have, so there's my carbon there, my first carbon. My second carbon, we're going to remove that OH, but we're going to remove with that H. You, you probably are wondering why am I talking about, uh, you know, the least number of hydrogens? Because there were two, we know OH is going to go. But the question is, is it the hydrogen this side or that side that's going to go with it? Uh, it's the hydrogen that has the least number of, uh, 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 yeah, it's the hydrogen that comes from the carbon with the least number. So this one has got three hydrogens. This one has got two. So we're going to take uh, the hydrogen from with a lesser number. Okay. We're going to take from the carbon 
which has a lesser number of hydrogens. Hey, I'm saying a lot, hey? Right, so I hope that makes sense. So there it is. You've got your reaction with, obviously, your hydrogen over there. Okay, right. So that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this. Okay, so that's a hydrogen over there. Okay, and this is how you should have answered that question number four. So when it comes to organic chemistry, I hope that you will get yourself those full marks. Please just know all those reactions. Uh, quite important. If you haven't watched our videos on it, uh, it's always important to do so. Okay, right. Otherwise, ladies and gents, please don't forget to subscribe and please tell some more people. Uh, I'm sorry for those who will discover this channel just when they have to go and write exams because they'll realize just how much they missed out that's why you need to make it a point that you always tell them about it okay right otherwise ladies and gents i'll see you guys next time shop shop